Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, the Father, in heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, in one God, have mercy on us. May we understand your holy will. Grant our prayer of Lord. May we realize our true relationship with you in this life and the life to come. Grant our prayer of Lord. May we continue to work with you in building your kingdom on earth. Grant our prayer of Lord. May we unite ourselves with you in the sacred mystery of the altar. Grant our prayer of Lord. May we recognize the greatness of this most holy sacrifice through which we worship you. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we feed on the bread of life, no more to hunger. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we have a share in the offering of Jesus on the cross. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we fill our lives with your ideas. Be joined with you in the supper of the Lord. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we perceive always and everywhere your all-pervading presence. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we end our day in your holy name, in our hearts and on our lips. Grant our prayer, Lord. Forgive our sins, O God. Grant our prayer, Lord. Cleanse and renew our hearts. Grant our prayer, Lord. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Well, I welcome you here this morning on the first day back into Standard Time. I'm glad you all made the uh, change of your clocks. Um, that extra hour of sleep last night let me move from two to three hours of sleep because, you know, I just sleep on a hard plank two hours a night. That's all I want to do. Other than that, I'm just, you know, always there as pastor and working for God. Uh, that extra hour of sleep was very nice, and that's good because today we have Mass. We have Sunday school. Take a little break. Hopefully the sun stays out, dries out the leaves. We rake leaves all afternoon. And then this evening at 7 o'clock, the uh, Disabled American Veterans Chapter 33 is coming in here. Uh, I have nothing to do besides just sit there. Um, and they are coming in, and we are their host. And they will be having their Veterans Day service this evening at 7 p.m. I've never been to one. I don't know exactly uh, what that service entails. Uh, their chaplain will actually be the homeless and the leader of the, of the uh, service. And so if you're uh, at all interested in what they may be doing this evening, uh, please come back for 7 p.m. for the Disabled American Veterans Chapter 33 Veterans Service. So as we do gather at this time, though, well-rested, refreshed, rare to go, I ask you to please make an examination of your conscience. Let us pray. 
grant, most gracious Father, that with purity of heart, we may work and fulfill this holy action, established in remembrance of the Last Supper in the death of Jesus Christ, and for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said there were two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We also ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy, we may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will. Bring us together in one great family, guided by your commandments and by love, truth, and justice. Amen. And then we say together, let us praise the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, indivisible, revealed in triune power for all time, now and forever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Son of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, and you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. May we, for whom death is now merely a shadow, rest ever secure in your promises. We ask us through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The lesson prescribed by the Church for this day's Holy Mass is taken from the second letter to the Thessalonians. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be glorified everywhere, just as it is among you, and that we may be rescued from wicked and evil people. For not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, that you are doing and will go on doing the things which we have commanded. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God, and to the steadfastness of Christ. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. O Lord, God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep such thoughts in our hearts and minds of your people forever, and direct their hearts toward you. Alleluia, alleluia. My brothers and sisters, after enduring brief pain, I have drunk of never failing life under God's covenant. Alleluia, alleluia. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, so I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. As some Sadducees, and they are the ones who denied that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus. They said, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up the descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The 
first married a woman who had died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and likewise all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will this woman be? For all seven have been married to her. And Jesus said to them, The children of this age, they marry and remarry. But those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age, to the resurrection of the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the burning bush, when he called Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not a God of the dead, but instead a God of the living, for to him all are alive. This is the Gospel of the Lord. the love in that relationship. And the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. 
So now you've got a king who raped somebody, and now it's going to get even worse. One of his sons is named Amnon, and he lusted after his half-sister, Tamar. And Amnon raped his half-sister. And this is not from afternoon soap operas. This is the Bible. This is the Word of God. Now let me read to you what the Bible says after he assaults his half-sister. This is the words right out of the Bible. Then Amnon was seized with a great, very great loathing for her. He raped her, and now he has a loathing for her. Indeed, his loathing was even greater than the lust he had felt for her. And Amnon said to her, Tamar, his half-sister, get out of my bedroom. But she said to him, no, my brother, <laughs> uh, no, my brother, for this is wrong and sending me away is greater than the one that you did to me when you raped me. So even though she was raped, the stigma lay on her, not her brother rapist. And she was left because of this. Basically, in the mind of 2,000, no, actually 3,000 years ago, she was left unmarriable for the rest of her life, and she had to hide in seclusion in her other brother's home. And according to the custom of the day, it would have been expected of her. This is what she wanted, was to be married by her brother rapist, because that was better than to be simply thrown away. Amnon was eventually killed by this girl's full brother, but that was only for the dignity of the family not because of what happened to his sister Tamar. Love has nothing at all to do with this. And that goes way back to the Ten Commandments of God. And this is why the Bible always has to be interpreted. Because in one of those Ten Commandments, and again, this is from Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. Go home, read it. If you've got a Bible now, read it. This is not me making this stuff up. This is what is in the Bible. It says, you, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. And I think we all know that, but then the sentence continues. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, wife, slave, ox, donkey, or anything that belongs to him. The wife is a possession. She's no different than an ox or a donkey. Again, love has nothing to do with marriage in this kind of a text. And this remains the marriage tradition that surrounded Jesus a full thousand years later. The religious law at the time of Jesus allowed the husband to simply write out a certificate of divorce, and then the woman became homeless. There is no alimony. There is no going to court, and you get half and I get half. The woman gets nothing. She is simply divorced. Now, it's great if you take a scrap of paper, you write on that scrap of paper, I divorce you. You don't have to have any reason whatsoever. Maybe she's not as thin as she used to be. Maybe she argues a little bit. Maybe she doesn't always listen. Or maybe no reason at all. Maybe you see something better. All you have to do is write, I divorce you, and it's over. But the wife, no matter what kind of a scumbag the husband was, could never divorce him. When Jesus was confronted with this question of such a divorce that tilted so much towards the husband's favor, he simply ended it. He said, no way. Not in my kingdom. And he treated the wife exactly the same as he treated the husband. No more, says Jesus, will a man be able to simply walk away from his wife. But even Jesus, he did not base this on love. He based it on a commitment, a promise that these people had made to God. Love simply had nothing to do with it. In 2005, Stephanie Kuntz wrote a book called Marriage, A History. And she argues and gives example from ancient history up to right now that, you know, our ancestors, for them, the whole idea of love and marriage would have been an absurd thought. Marriage was for utility. They were often arranged for strategic or economic gain. And that is why in the year 1405, a woman wrote a religious book. And this woman, after she, as she got older, she went to live in a nun. She went to live in a convent. She became a nun. And her book is called The Book of the City of Ladies. And this was a book that fantasized about heaven being in a city with an impenetrable wall surrounding it and only women living on the inside. This woman's idea of heaven was to be protected and separated from all the men in her life. So how confining, how demoralizing must have society been for this woman to have this kind of hope in heaven to simply be protected from a potential husband? You know, even through the 1950s, divorce was so demonized that women would sometimes 
have to suffer through terrible marriages because there was no alternative. Love simply was not the same as marriage. Now because of all of that, okay, keeping all of that in mind, that's not supposed to lift you up and make you feel happy. Because of all of that, well, that's why we can understand what Jesus has to say when he says that marriage is not a part of heaven. Because to his day and age, there had to be an awful lot of people listening to Jesus who simply would not have wanted to spend forever after with the one that they call a husband or a wife. And this is when Jesus drops that bombshell. He says, we are a different kind of being on the other side. We are not male and female. We are not able to be married and divorced and given in marriage and all of that stuff. We are simply a different kind of being. And so that till death do us part is why the church says that at death, if somebody wants to, they can remarry again because the bond of marriage stops at that point. And don't think of that as a negative as you're losing your husband, you're losing your wife. Jesus is trying to make the distinction that all of those horrible things that were associated with being forced into a marriage, that comes to an end because marriage was not about love and God's heaven is all about love. So heaven is God's reality. And I don't think we do it any justice at all trying to say what we imagine heaven is going to be like. Now let me read to you another passage from the Bible. A guy who actually went up there and came back. And I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm talking about a guy over here named Paul, right there. And Paul says, I was caught up into the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. Only God knows. I was caught up into paradise, and I heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. Paul had no trouble talking all the time. He never holds back his tongue. And yet, when it comes to heaven, he says, I have nothing to say. Same thing with Jesus. He comes back from the grave, and he never tells us anything about heaven. I don't think we can process heaven. I think heaven is completely unimaginable. And so, as the church's year comes to a close, and we start thinking about end time, we start thinking, we start thinking about the judgment, we start thinking about heaven, it's not about fear. There's another message in there that the church wants to get, us, get across to us. And that's what we've got in the lesson today. And it was that message of we are not always faithful, but God is. If Jesus is in heaven, I don't know what the rest of heaven is going to be like, but if Jesus is in heaven, he is faithful to us no matter how faithful we are to him. I trust that heaven will be a wonderful experience, and I have no idea at all what that means. But I trust that he is faithful to us. But before I close, I'd like to take that marriage analogy and take it from heaven and bring it back down to earth. Heaven is all things wonderful, but down here on earth it takes a lot of work. Now marriage is a union. Sometimes in that union, the two spouses don't always agree with each other. Sometimes those arguments can get heated. And if a couple doesn't maybe step back a little bit, take a breather, the marriage can suffer, the marriage can end. Now, we're going to have an election in just a few days. There is a union here of us as citizens in this country. We're going to have an election that's followed a very mean-spirited campaign. There's an awful lot of people that seem to be evenly divided. This country seems to be almost, you know, that blue and red that scares me. It's almost like north and south all over again. A lot of anger has been spewed. The nation is pretty evenly divided, like I said. And though, even though it's right down the middle, it seems, someone on Tuesday is going to become our president. Not their president. Our president. I don't know who's going to win. I know who I already voted for. But someone is going to be our president, and even if I lose, my candidate loses, that's still going to be our president. Whichever candidate wins, our president. So as hard as that may be to swallow, that person will be our president. Come Wednesday, we need to work at healing this union of our country. We need to realize that this could be torn apart unless, just like in a marriage, we step back and see, hopefully, it's better off us together in a union than it is for us to be separated and who knows what would happen. Compromise is not a sin. That's essential in a marriage and that's essential in our union. As all the politicians say, we may be more than a slogan with us. May God bless America and we need it.
So may God bless America. And for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Lord, as we gather this morning before your altar on an absolutely beautiful fall morning, we pray in memory of Emil Lisensky on the 10th anniversary of his death as offered by the Lisensky family. We offer our prayers in memory of John Wadsworth, who passed away uh, 46 years ago. On November 8th of 1970, it's offered by his daughter, Teresa Girardi. We also offer prayers for two priests of our church who passed away this past week, both priests serving over 50 years, Father Senior Henry Mayus of the Western Diocese, and also Father Jan Vilcek of our Eastern Diocese. We also continue to pray for the following who are battling cancer. Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Sprosky, Randy Clemens by Grandmother Dottie Baronis, Carl Dickinson by Joe and Peg Custer, Fathers Ray Trada and Maurice Lazelle as offered by myself, Richard Poe was offered by the Poe and Foster family, two-year-old Jack, uh, Jack Sala is offered by Marianna Foster, and Frank Sprosky is offered by his brother Don, Sprosky Gates and Kirk Mendel families. Also for Alex, who's only 16 years old, and diagnosed with lymphoma, lymphoma Hodgkin's disease, and Alicia, a young mother of three, with stage four breast cancer, and Liz Bridgman, diagnosed with cancer, raising three young girls on her own, and those intentions are being offered by Cindy Benjamin. Are there any other intentions you would like to offer? Excuse me, uh, Charlene Chamora. Charlene Chamora? Okay. Yes. In memory of Nellie Foster on the anniversary of her death. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Dan Bajek, he's a mechanic, he's worked for me. He's battling liver and uh, liver cancer. Cancer. Yeah. All right. For all of these intentions, Lord, and also the private ones that we keep in our thought and bring to you now, we also ask the Lord to bless each and every one of us here gathered and to be with all those who are perish who are unable to be with us here today and those who are perish who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father, and the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us is our salvation. Came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. This kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I love the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, for everything is from you, and we 
only give you what we have already received from you.
We implore you to defend and guide her throughout the world, together with her priests and all true believers of the Holy Faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. Imbued with faith in your holy care, your rule, and fatherly love. Wholeheartedly this day, unite in spirit with all of those. We are the most blessed Mary, Mother of Jesus Christ, and likewise the apostles and all the countless hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause which Jesus Christ sacrificed his life and his most precious blood. Just as they believe, professed, and united with you through prayer and this immaculate oblation, which you have instituted from the beginning of the world and in time have fulfilled through Jesus Christ and gave it to humanity as a pledge of eternal salvation. So we too this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit, and accept from your hands this holy bread and this precious chalice as a longed-for gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. He promised us this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power by the multiplication of bread and feeding with a hungry multitude of people. Afterward, he foretold the giving of that food and drink to his disciples and friends as a more excellent nourishment when he said, It is my Father who gives you the real heavenly bread. I myself am the living bread come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And afterwards, from the temporal and messianic life, the divine teacher and giver of the covenant was drawing to a close. He gathered into the upper room, all those who had loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I will overcome the world. If you live in me and my words stay a part of you, you may ask what you will and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word. If my Father will love him, we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one, as we are one. I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me I would have in my company, for I am to see the glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the archpriest in prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, Again, he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. to your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance, as from him, who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith, that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar, 
into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting light, and to those who are in light straight in the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully sure of their suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servant, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy. And with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit. from you, 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused by judgment, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master awakened me, a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives, reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy of this you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that he has rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
the body and the blood of Christ. 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 The body and the blood of Christ.
attribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. For your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. In His presence, God was beginning. Through Him, all things came to being, and apart from Him, nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found light, light for the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, the darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every person was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, that the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, and his own did not accept him. And any who did accept him, he empowered to become the children of God. These are they, who in his name were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willingness, but by God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thank you, Jesus, God.